Hi everybody, I hope you're having a great day. In this video I'm going to be covering Moses Magnum. He made his first appearance in Giant Size Spider-Man, issue number 4, in April of 1975. He also goes by the name Magnum Force, as well as the title Arms Dealer to the World. Now he's an Ethiopian male that stands 5 feet 9 inches tall and weighs 159 pounds, having brown eyes and black hair. And what's interesting is that he was born with no true mutant power, but he was given seismic abilities by Apocalypse later in life. When this occurred, he gained the ability to generate very powerful vibrational waves, which he could use to boost his own strength and durability, or direct at particular objects, having devastating effects. It should be noted that to do this, he didn't have to come into direct contact with the object and that he could direct it from a distance away. And all of this being said, the most impressive use of his power is to generate massive earthquakes. But aside from these superpowers, he's also a very talented weapons designer, as well as a savvy businessman and political mover who happened to be nice with his hands. Now seeing as how Moses has been interested in weapons since he was a young boy, he eventually grew to become the world's leading independent weapons manufacturer, starting a firm named Deterrence Research Corporation. But in developing some of his lethal applications, he was involved in some very shady testing on people. This led to the intervention of Spider-Man and the Punisher, who attacked and shut down his facilities, which would have taken Moses out if he wouldn't have barely escaped. He would later reappear after setting up a mining operation on an island of Japan. But his greed and ambition led him to do even more shady dealings again, this time leading him to run afoul of Power Man, aka Luke Cage. And after his own drill triggered a huge earthquake, he fell into the drill shaft. But it was later shown that he was saved by the powerful ancient mutant named Apocalypse, who then imbued him with his seismic powers in exchange for him causing general chaos and havoc. Moses would then go on to try to blackmail the Prime Minister of Japan, threatening to actually sink the entire island nation if he wasn't declared its leader. But after he decimated an entire port city just to prove that he was serious, the X-Men and another hero named Sunfire stepped in. Their confrontation led to the destruction of Moses' base, but he was able to slip away again. Being business-minded, he set up another company named Magnum Munitions, this time going on to buy highly classified Deathlock Cyborg technology. And he still kept his ruthlessness, later going on to bid against the rival weapons manufacturer Advanced Idea Mechanics, also known as AIM. He destroyed their headquarters after they refused to withdraw a bid for a defense contract. Dude was serious about his money. But after some other failures came along, Apocalypse got frustrated with him and actually destabilized his powers so that he would cause earthquakes if he simply touched the ground. Moses would try to redeem himself with Apocalypse through a show of power, but this effort was thwarted by the Avengers. He would later end up coming into conflict with Wolverine's son, Dokken, but this didn't pan out too well for him, seemingly being killed. Now, due to his powers and abilities and his influence on the Marvel Universe, for my 1 to 10 rating, I'll give Moses Magnum a rating of 6, which is an expert rating. I hope everyone enjoyed this video. I'll talk to you next time. Be sure to like and subscribe to The New Sage.